it's the high-tech fuel used in race cars and dragsters. And it comes from corn. Ethanol. That's right, everybody. Today, we're doing a deep dive into one of my favorite biofuels or fuel additives, ethanol. We're gonna get down and dirty on the bad stuff and the good stuff. And we're gonna get to the truth. Ethanol is basically ethyl alcohol, the same type of alcohol found in alcoholic beverages, but it's used as fuel. Wow. During production, starch from the plants is fermented and distilled into sugars, which microbes turn into ethanol. It's the same way you make beer or vodka or moonshine or, Eddie, what's your favorite drink? Apple teenies. There's a couple of ways to make fuel grade ethanol, but the most common is the dry mill method, which is the same as my grandpappy's white lightning recipe. The grain passes through a grinding meal and comes out as a powder. A mixture made of this grain powder water and an enzyme enters a high heat cooker. This enzyme converts the starch into sugars that can be fermented to create alcohol. What's an enzyme? Well, it's a protein that can take another chemical and change it. Your saliva's got enzymes in it that do a very similar thing. Go eat a saltine and just chew on it, like forever. It gets sweet. Trust the process. Well, that's the enzymes in your saliva turning the starches into sugars but we're making ethanol. So the yeast is added to the sugar mixture to begin the fermentation process. Yeast digests the sugar, breaking it down into ethanol and carbon dioxide. Then a dehydration process removes the water from the separated ethanol. Often, a small amount of gasoline is added to the ethanol so that it's non-potable. That doesn't mean you can't carry it around, it means you can't drink it. There's a bunch of laws out there that say all the ethanol that's gonna be used as fuel has to be made so you can't drink it. I don't know, man, it sounds like a dare. Don't drink it, you idiots. Then it's mixed with petroleum and the ethanol becomes fuel for your car. Making ethanol a major player in the fuel industry could have serious drawbacks. It takes a lot of land to make not a lot of corn ethanol and creating significant amounts of energy from food crops would deplete the amount of land available for growing actual food for people to eat. You know, how people like to eat food that grows? Each acre of corn can yield about 328 gallons of corn ethanol. That's a lot of corn for not too much fuel, so it's fine as a bridge or a supplemental fuel, but it doesn't make a lot of sense as a primary fuel. Ethanol blended gas is labeled as E10, E15, and sometimes E85. The number after the E indicates the percentage of ethanol by volume. So E10 has up to 10% ethanol. All automakers approve blends up to E10 in their gasoline vehicles. In 2011, the EPA began allowing the use of E15 in model year 2001 in newer gasoline vehicles. E85, also called flex fuel, is an ethanol gasoline blend containing 51 to 85-ish percent ethanol. E85 can be used in flex fuel vehicles, which are specifically designed to run on gasoline, E85, or any mixture of the two. By volume, ethanol contains about one-third less energy than gasoline. Drivers shouldn't really notice a performance loss when they're using E85. In fact, some fuel flex vehicles perform better, have more torque and horsepower when they're running on E85 than when they're running on regular gas. So we hit a few things here and there, but what about the big question? Is ethanol bad for your engine? Sometimes. It has to. How can it not? No way. Not a chance. In newer engines, E10 oxygenated gasoline can be safely used with only minimal inconvenience, like a slight decrease in miles per gallon and fuel efficiency. But many other types of engines, they're not designed to resist the possible damaging effects of ethanol fuel. Ethanol attracts water the same way that I attract twice divorced chain smoking patrons at Applebee's. Oh, but their appetizers are exceptional. Ethanol attracts and absorbs water, including water from the air. When it absorbs enough water, fuel water contamination occurs in the car's gas tank, and that affects your engine performance. If the car sits for a while, fuel separation occurs. This is where the gas and the water form layers in the gas tank, and the motor sucks up the water layer into the engine, which makes for some seriously costly damage. Ethanol is alcohol, and alcohol can cause corrosion in the fuel system. Metal parts rust, and plastic parts become deformed or cracked. A lot of older cars especially have problems with ethanol fuel, but if you're driving your car enough and your gas tank isn't crummy, 
you probably don't need to worry about that. And there's also the concern that ethanol reduces the lubricating properties of gasoline, which is true to a point. There's many people up in arms alleging that ethanol and fuel is ruining their engine for that reason. But good oil companies take great pains to make sure that their gasoline minimizes engine wear. So modern gas in a modern car shouldn't be causing damage. But up north, where they're running two-stroke snowmobiles, they're blaming ethanol for munching up their engines, which makes sense. Two strokes need oil mixed with the gas to run right, and ethanol cuts the efficacy of lubricating elements. It might be onto something, is all I'm saying. So why do we use it then? Well, first, ethanol is extremely resistant to pre-ignition. E85 is like a 105 octane gasoline. So if you're not worried about fuel economy and you got extremely high compression ratios and you need super precise ignition timing, well, you might want to use a more ethanol rich fuel. Wait, high compression, precise ignition timing? Don't care about how much fuel I use. That sounds like a race car. If you walk around the pits at a race, it doesn't smell like gas. It smells like ethanol, baby. These cars are tuned to run on ethanol-rich fuels, so they don't have the same concerns about engine wear that I would in, say, my 35-year-old Oldsmobile. Also, gasoline blended with ethanol burns cleaner than pure gasoline. In here, we got ethanol, and in here, we got gasoline. Can you see it? No. See the difference? In the flame? No. You barely see that one. All right, it was too light outside to see the difference, so we're gonna do it in here. Cool. Ethanol, gas. Look at that, sweet, sweet flame. So you can see how much cleaner ethanol is than gas. Let's get back to the lab and talk about other crap. Ethanol cuts a car's greenhouse gas emissions. The addition of ethanol to gasoline makes it an oxygenate, which satisfies the requirements of the Clean Air Act. So our ethanol makes our current tech a little cleaner before the next thing takes off, whatever that might be. Fully electric, hydrogen, something else, and then the internal combustion engine becomes just like my happiness, a thing of the past. Please subscribe to Donut. It's how we get to make new shows. We want to make you happy. Hey, I'd like to thank Audible for partnering with us on this episode. It's the holidays. You're gonna be traveling. You gotta to listen to a good book. You're going home, visiting your family. You're gonna to need to get away. Why don't you get something to listen to that makes you smarter? I'm listening to Oil by Upton Sinclair. Right now, for a limited time, you can get three months of Audible for just $6.95 a month. That's more than half of the regular price. Bart, who are you talking to? It says here on my computer that Audible is a leading provider of premium digital spoken audio information and entertainment on the internet. Wow. That's impressive. They've got an unmatched selection of audiobooks and other audio products. You can choose three titles every month, including one audiobook and two Audible originals that you can't find anywhere else. Listen on any device, anywhere, anytime, on the go or at home. Give yourself the gift of listening. And while you're at it, why don't you gift that to somebody else? Just text Science Garage to 500-500 or go to audible.com slash science garage. Did you get that? Go to audible.com slash science garage. Click this yellow button. It's a subscribe button if you didn't know. Hit the notification button so that you can stay up to date. If you want to know more about fuels, you can check out the first video we ever did on gasoline. Check out this awesome wheelhouse. Check out all of our new merchandise. We got a ton of it. Donutmedia.com. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Donutmedia. Follow me at BidsBardo. Don't tell my wife those bottles in the back of the liquor cabinet are white lightning.